Hey everyone, a few weeks ago I made a video on my favourite fashion YouTubers and I asked you to give me recommendations on some of your own. I had loads of responses and suggestions, so thank you for that. But the name I saw recommended most, by far, was Fashion Elitist. I don't believe I've watched any of his videos before, so I'm going to watch one through today and let you know my thoughts. I will be on the phone again, so excuse me if I'm not looking at the camera. He seems to have a lot of popular videos, but the one that really intrigues me is the one titled, It's Your Fault Your Style Sucks. I've always wanted to know why my style is so bad, so let's have a look. Now I'm not going to play the entire video, I'll leave a link to his video in the description if you want to watch it yourself, but I am going to watch it all the way through myself now, and I'll just pause and talk about the main points as we go through it. Alright, first of all, I love his channel description. It's not your style, it's you. Whoa, someone's texting me. Welcome back to the channel. Man, I'm so glad I have a good mustache. Oh wait, someone's texting me. Okay, let's get on with the video. Let's get into the subjectiveness of fashion. Let's define the word subjectiveness. Basically, it means that it's all based on your own personal opinion. Let's just say for the fun fact of this example, I hate skinny jeans. If I look at skinny jeans on anyone else that isn't Liam Neeson, and I say they suck, that outfit's terrible because I hate skinny jeans, that is subjective. Someone else might think skinny jeans are rockin', they're swag, fire, 100 emoji, but another pillar of fashion is human interaction. Viewing people's outfits and discussing whether we dislike or like them. The idea of subjectiveness comes full reign when people use it as a argument point where you no longer can have an opinion on someone's outfit because it is subjective. This completely destroys any allowance of discussion. We need to be open-minded in allowing people to converse with us about why they dislike certain outfits. If I were to never take any opinion or ever hear any discussion about something that is subjective, will I not grow as an artist in the terms of my own fashion? I know what he means by this and he's done a really good job of articulating it, but I think it all depends who you are doing fashion for. A lot of people, in fact I'd say the majority of people, just want to wear something they like and feel comfortable in. They have no interest in growing as an artist in fashion. Of course, we on the outside can tell them where we think they're going wrong and what they can do to improve their outfits. But one question that rises out of that is, what makes us right? I don't think anyone should be expected to take our opinions on board and make changes to their outfits to grow as a fashion artist because it might not be relevant to them. Some people are really happy in clothes that you and I might class as mitt. The outfit that they're wearing and we think needs improving might already be the end result of a journey or fashion evolution that they've gone through personally. And so they might be already at a place where they absolutely love their outfit, only for people like us to come along and say, it needs improving. But where I see fashion elitists point having a lot of weight is for people who put themselves out there and tell others what to wear. People like me who have a YouTube channel. In fact, anyone who posts on social media to show off their outfits should be prepared to take this sort of criticism because they're sort of putting themselves in the firing line. And this does open up fashion as a discussion, as he rightly said. But then it does sort of circle back around to what makes that person commenting on your outfit relevant. They might have a totally different style to you, in which case it's one subjective opinion against another. These two people are never going to agree or take each other's criticism on board because their tastes are completely different. And if we did all make changes to our style based on other people's opinions, isn't there a danger that we all end up looking the same? Or worse, socially pressuring people into wearing something that they don't actually like because we think it's a progression in their style, when really they're just happy at level one and there's nothing really wrong with that. Look who's come to join us.
I've talked about finding your personal style a lot and to some extent that does mean sticking to your guns and knowing what you like no matter what other people are saying. But just to contradict myself, there's definitely value in staying open-minded, keeping a fluid opinion and knowing that something you hate today, you might love tomorrow. The one thing I think can be taught is fit not style. There are certain rules in fashion that do just universally apply whether you like it or not. For example, we talk about the rule of thirds a lot, which is a genuine rule that you can follow that will actually make your outfits look better. We live in a mathematical world and it's undeniable that certain proportions look good and incorporating those into your fit can improve your overall style. Now, I'm not sure if he was joking or not, but he does say, you know, he hates skinny jeans, except for when Liam Neeson wears them. And that's because in the picture he's showing, he has the correct proportions. And that's a skill that anyone can learn and evolve in. But overall, I love the point he's making. It sparks a really good debate. There's no right or wrong in this. I'm just adding to the conversation. Everything doesn't need to be supported, specifically brands, fashion advice, and misinformation. But it's a trend currently at the moment to support everyone at every standpoint, especially in the fashion community. Because currently, fashion at the moment is in a peak of toxic positivity. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is toxic positivity? Let's look the definition up. Toxic positivity is the belief that no matter how dire or difficult a situation is, people should maintain a positive mindset. If we're consistently pushed in the direction of being constantly positive, will said people never really learn to truly evolve? The main, main idea here is, it is insanity to believe that positivity will allow change. Of course, positivity can be used in a as a very good tool to help motivate people, to help people continue on with the journey of pushing that rock up the hill. But the thing is, it doesn't allow people to really see around them. I think a lot of it comes down to the default human behavior of tribalism. People self-identify themselves with others who have the same style and tastes. And in the world of fashion and social media, this will naturally result in constant positivity. Where I can see this kind of toxic positivity becoming an issue is when people don't actually know what they like if they're at the very beginning of their fashion journey and they go onto social media to find help or find inspiration. And so this is when things can become a little bit blurred. You can easily be swayed to think someone's outfit is nice because they've got a thousand likes, but someone else's outfit might only have one like, and it might be more to your personal taste, but you've convinced yourself the 1000 like outfit is the best. But then just thinking off the top of my head, is that actually a problem? I suppose you could make the argument that everyone starts to look the same and the global style won't really change much. Again though, I'm not really sure why that is an issue. And even if it does really annoy you, the flip side is that at least what you're wearing is now going to stand out more. And isn't that what life is about? Standing out, getting attention? No, just me. Okay, moving on. Although I can't really understand the argument of moving fashion forward as a whole, if that even is the argument, I might have misunderstood it. What I can understand is that toxic positivity will certainly lead to a lot of wasted money, overconsumption, landfill, and probably a lot of stress and anxiety for those who find that fitting in is important to them. The world of fashion on social media is definitely a bottomless pit and it cannot be satisfied. And if we want fashion to evolve further, we must provide criticism. We as people need to understand the difference between criticism and hate, especially with fashion. Being hateful is not constructive. Being hateful isn't giving anything to help this person grow, but giving critiques with an actual helpful push in the right direction for a said person that you're critiquing is difficult because I truly believe that a critic is needed in order for others to truly grow in their own respective artistic endeavors. So one theme I keep hearing is evolution in fashion and I'm not sure exactly why that is important. We constantly go through cycles of fashion trends. Old trends keep coming back and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm not sure how he defines fashion evolution but for me, it's a very personal thing. It's all about knowing what you like and what looks good on your body type. 
This is definitely something that has evolved for me over the years, wearing things that suit me rather than what's just on trend. And it does sort of come back to those buzzwords he was mentioning of silhouette and proportion. When people start to understand these sort of things along with body type and skin tones, etc., this for me is evolution in style. And I am gonna reiterate a point from earlier. If we look at the title of this video, it's your fault, your style sucks. According to who? Why should anyone else's opinion on your style be relevant to you? It's not something that has a straightforward answer, but it's interesting to think about. Self-reflection or self-introspection. You must remain open to introspection in order to evolve into your own personal style. Fashion isn't this instant gratification that people tend to latch onto since it tends to be a tangible way for people to achieve material orgasms. This in itself destroys the meaning in fashion, which soon becomes focused on a consumeristic mindset for those to flex their new items onto others. Fashion not only has become a performance for Instagram and TikTok likes, many creators only put on outfits for the socials so that those who participate in mindless clicks and views will continue to give them the means to social climb. All right, there are a lot of good points here, uh, which I totally agree with. So let's go through some of them. So on the first point about fashion as instant gratitude, this rings very true with me who used to take part in this performance. Those who follow me may have noticed that I do way less outfit videos now than I used to in the past. And that's because I used to buy things just to show off on social media and then I would never really wear them much in real life. I've put a bit of a halt to this, not totally, because I am human and I do get swayed and drawn into certain trends. Overall, it's been good for my wallet but quite bad for my outfit inspiration videos. And that's not to say that I'm gonna stop doing outfit inspiration videos. I actually love doing those videos, especially when I get to work with a brand I really like, or I've actually gathered enough clothes that I'm actually wearing to show off in a video. But I guess the overall point I'm trying to make is in agreement with Fashion Elitist. I used to use clothes as part of my identity to fit into certain groups. It's not a very healthy mindset because it leads to overconsumption and constantly chasing trends to make it feel like you still belong. Fashion should work for you and not the other way around. Fashion and social media have very much taken the hold of people's balls and really just has pushed so much consumerism so much instant gratification and the pressure to be in trend or have style. My brain feels like mush when I go through TikTok and watch just different fashion accounts constantly flex out their different styles of fashion and stuff. I'm trying to express to you that this isn't something you really should be diving into mentally because this can be exhausting for you. The next point he makes about social media is something we can all learn from. Social media certainly has its uses, but there are a lot of drawbacks, as he's already mentioned. It should be used as a tool to help you in fashion and not as a source of obsession that leads you to stress. If any of you follow my Instagram, you might think that I'm totally neglecting it. But the truth is, I just don't actually use it that much at the moment. I don't go on there just for the sake of it. I go on there when I need it or there's something that I genuinely want to share. I'm making it work for me and not the other way around. To have this idea that you need to have these things instantly to figure out yourself, your identity, your own sense of style, immediately is just plain out wrong. Because no matter how many fashion gurus or fashion stylists that you watch, will you ever gain immediate experience until you've truly lived it. There are so many tools that you've learned from going through life <coughs> in order to achieve things that you want. We all feel the need to constantly improve and get better because who doesn't want to? But when should we say enough's enough and we need to stop. You really don't need the pressure that you feel when you watch these TikToks to perform better or gain inspiration. Only you yourself can only provide that. The burps are gross, but that's subjective. I like how he brings it back around at the end and summarizes it. It sort of just shows that we're really talking about the same thing even if it looks like we're having a disagreement. There isn't a need for anyone to feel like they have to evolve their style right now. 
any evolution that will happen, if at all, will naturally come with experience, as he said. And I think I said it earlier, but I'll say it again. I don't particularly think any of our opinions are the correct one. One of the greatest things about fashion is that we all have different tastes and opinions and takes on things. It's what makes it such a diverse form of art. So please do feel free to add to the conversation in the comments. So my final thoughts are what a great channel and thank you very much for recommending it to me. I instantly subbed to him and I can see that he's got loads of other interesting topics that I cannot wait to watch. Do make sure you go and watch his actual full video, I'll leave the link down in the description box. There are a lot of extra nuanced points that he makes and I didn't want to completely steal his video and put it into mine, so make sure you go and watch his. If there's any more creators out there that you think I should see, please do let me know. I'm always looking for new opinions, new ways to grow and evolve, as Fashion Elitist said. But anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Ta-ra!